Hi, this is Kim from Emerging Creatively Tutorials, and you are watching ECT TV episode 47. In today's episode of ECT TV, we're going to be making these cool, fun, cute spiral dangle earrings. So let's just get started. These are the tools and materials that you'll need to make these earrings. So first you'll need wire. I'm using 20 gauge half hard round wire and I'd love to encourage you to use whatever wire you feel comfortable with. Um, if you haven't worked a lot with wire before you probably want to try something more on the inexpensive side. So maybe some of the artistic wire that you find at the craft store. In fact, that's what I'm using here. This is um, silver plated copper wire um, or try copper wire or brass wire. And then as you feel more comfortable, you could use sterling silver wire. Um, even if this is the first time that you're making these earrings, you might want to just try a less expensive wire on your way just to make sure you get the hang of the tutorial. Okay, um, but I do suggest 20 gauge wire. You might want to experiment with larger gauge wire as you, um, if you want to make these again in a larger, make larger spirals. Um, I'll leave that up to you though. So you'll need wire. You'll need two earring wires and you can make your own earring wires. I have a tutorial. Um, one of the past episodes of ECT TV has an earring wire tutorial. So if you want to make your own, you can do that or you can use store bought. Then you'll need two four millimeter jump rings. And the tools you'll need are wire cutters, round nose pliers, chain nose pliers, you'll need a roller, and then this is kind of optional but um, it'll give you a cool look, you'll need a steel block and a chasing hammer. And a chasing hammer will flatten the wire. Um, if you don't want to flatten the wire, you could use a rawhide or a hard plastic or nylon hammer, and that will harden the wire without it actually being flattened. So let's get started. We're going to get started by cutting the wire for the spiral dangles. And it's good to cut both wires for each earring at the same time so you can keep them uniform. And so I'm going to tell you what I am cutting, the length I'm cutting mine to, but you might find that you want your earrings to be a little longer, a little shorter. So um, like I mentioned before, I encourage you to customize any of my tutorials to your own liking. Um, if it's maybe not quite long enough or you want them to be a little shorter, that's fine. So first I'm going to make sure I have a flush cut at the end and we can actually do, fix that at, after we cut all the wire too. So I'm going to cut two pieces at three and a half inches, two pieces at three and a quarter inch, and then two pieces at three inches. So, And it doesn't really matter um, the size of the wire that you cut. It just matters that you keep them even. And it's a good thing to keep <laughs> a hold of your wire when you cut it because I just cut that piece and um, it went flying. So I'm just going to cut another piece. And then I'm just going to line these two pieces up. Set them aside. And then I'm going to go ahead and cut all the other pieces that I need for these earrings. And sometimes when you're working with these coils after you cut a piece, you kind of lose the end. So this is a three and a quarter size. And then the three inch size. And 
And so now I'm just going to make sure each end has a flush cut. Um, some of them will already have a flush cut because that's how they were cut. And but the other pieces that were not, you need to make sure. And you make a flush cut just by using the back of your wire cutters toward your work. And you can make sure everything's even at the same time you're doing that. Make sure the two wires are the same length. So I'm just holding them together and doing them at the same time. And I'm just taking my fingers and straightening them out a little bit as I do it too so that I can tell if they're the same length. But you could use a um, nylon covered pliers to do the same thing, to straighten out the wire. You don't want to do it too much though because then it will harden the wire and then the wire gets a little more difficult to work with. Okay. Now we're going to do the same exact technique with every single one of these wires. So I'm going to show you how to do it once and then you can repeat it for all of the wires. Um, if you need to watch it again to get it, that's fine. You can rewind and go back and watch it. Um, and if you're kind of making this as we're going along, um, you can go ahead and pause the video when we get to after I show you how to do the one and then go ahead and make the rest. So. Um, I'm starting with my wire, and I have my round nose pliers. So I'm going to hold the wire. I like the middle of my spiral to be small, so I'm holding the wire all the way down at the tip. If you want a kind of bigger circle in the middle of your spiral, um, you can go further up your round nose pliers, but I would suggest taking your sharpie and making a mark um, where you would like to do that so that all your spirals are uniform, so you can always start at the same spot. Since I'm trying to just get down at the bottom of the tip, I can keep an eye on where that is. So, you want to hold the wire in your pliers so it's at the top of the pliers but not poking through. You should be able to hold, run your finger over it. And now I'm going to twist away with this wrist. This is, if you watched last week, this is the same idea for making a spiral. Um, while I twist away with this wrist, I'm going to be wrapping the wire with my other hand around the, the pliers. So you go as far as you can, you readjust, and then complete the loop. So we're just starting out with a small loop. And now I'm going to switch to my chain nose pliers. I'm going to hold that loop right in my pliers. And so this, this part you'll get much better at as you go along doing this. Um, but we're just going to go ahead and make a spiral now. And so how I do that is I'm holding the loop in my chain nose pliers and then I'm kind of pushing up the wire and then readjusting um, my pliers on the loop and pushing up again. Alternatively, sometimes I'm actually making this sort of motion with my chain nose pliers, kind of doing both at the same time. But you're putting pressure against the wire with your thumb. And so you're just going to keep going and um, you can really go around as many times as you like with the spiral, um, but you're going to want to kind of try to keep track so all of your um, spirals are the same in your earrings. So however many times you want to go around, go ahead. I've gone around three times. I think I'm going to go around a total of four. Nope, I think three was better. <laughs> I'm going to go three and a half times. So I'm going to keep it at that. You can um, do it however many times you like. So now we have this spiral kind of off to the side here. And this wire is like this. 
that doesn't really look that cool. It actually looks like a musical note, so if you're into music, you might like that. Um, but I would like my wire to be coming straight on top of my spiral. So I'm just going to take my chain nose pliers and bend it up straight. So if you've seen my spiral head pin video, that's basically what we're doing here. So that is one component. We have a total of six to do. So like I said, if you'd like to pause the video, if you're watching this while you're making it, um, go ahead and pause it here and I'll be back when I have all of my spiral dangles ready to go. And then I'll show you the next step. So I have all of my spirals. So these are all kind of like spiral head pins. Um, and I have them all ready in their three different sizes. So I'm going to show you the next step and we're going to put a loop on the end of each one. And so to do that, it's just like when we started the spiral, we're making a loop again. Um, so we're going to hold the wire at the tip, so the tip is at the top here, and we're going to twist away from us, and go ahead and make a loop, um, and again that loop looks like a P. So I want it to be straight, so I'm just going to kind of put my round nose pliers back in there, and kind of roll back, and make it straight. And you might find that it comes apart a little. So I'm just taking my chain nose pliers and fixing that. So that's basically one little dangle here. And I'm going to do that on all of my uh, different spirals. So I'm going to do that and then I will be back. Through the magic of video, I now have all six of my spiral dangles. Um, with a loop on top of them. Um, so the next step I'm going to show you is hammering them. Okay, so this is optional, but I'm going to hammer my spirals to help them keep their shape. They'll probably be fine without it if you don't want to actually hammer them. And like I mentioned before, I'm going to hammer mine flat, so I'm using a chasing hammer. But if you want it to keep the round shape, um, your wire to keep the round shape, then you should use a nylon or a rawhide hammer to do this. So I'm just going to actually just hammer the spiral part. So I'm going to hold that part right on the uh, steel block and hold the rest off and then I'm going to hammer. And then I'm just going to flip it over and hammer the other side. And with 20 gauge wire you'll find it goes flat pretty quickly so you don't really need to hammer it so much. Um, if you watch my ECT TV from the last episode, it took a little more hammering um, because it was a thicker wire. So um, I'm going to do that with all of my different uh, spiral dangles. So I have all of my spiral dangles hammered now. So the next step is to assemble the earrings. But what I want you to look at and think about um, is how your loops are here compared to how your loops are on your earring wire. So if I were to put these directly onto my earring wire, they would be the right direction. They would hang this way and it would be perfect. But I know from experience that the earring wire um, it's a little bit not big enough, so that's why I added a jump ring in the middle. So when you add a jump ring in, it kind of makes everything, it gives you an extra step. So the jump ring will go that way. So really the loops need to go this way. And that means we need to just go ahead, take our chain nose pliers, and bend our loops so that they are perpendicular with the spiral. So the spiral is flat this way, the loop is flat that way. And so I'm just going to do that with all of my 
spirals and I'm just looking to make sure I want them all to be the same so I'm seeing how the spiral um, ends and then just making sure I have the loop going the same way in all of them. Okay, so now um, I'm just showing you an earring. You do that for all of them. You want to open up your jump ring. And I didn't mention this, you actually need a second pair of either chain nose pliers or I'm using bent nose pliers. Just anything that's flat on the inside. So you don't want to use your round nose pliers to open up your jump rings. And then to open up a jump ring, you're going to just bring one plier towards you, one away from you, and you open it up kind of front to back, but not out. And then you just start sliding on the spiral dangles. I'm starting with the largest and just going to the smallest. And now I'm closing the jump ring. And now I'm just going to open up my earring wire. And you open up an earring wire basically just the same as you open up a jump ring. I'm going to attach it by the jump ring. Slide it in the loop and then close the loop. And then you have these really pretty earrings. You could do it kind of the opposite on the other side, so you know it kind of be the short ones would be on the outside at all times. Here are the completed earrings and aren't they super cute? I really like them. They'll go great with our latest ECT TV episode, um, the Spiral Pendant. They would also go great with my new e-workshop, um, the Beaded Spiral Pendant e-workshop. If you like learning from me in these ECT TV episodes, and if maybe if you're a newsletter, um, you if you like learning from me in this way with these ECT TV episodes, I also have a lot of products that are similar, but they maybe take you in a little bit deeper into some projects. Um, so the Beaded Spiral e-workshop is one of them that I have mentioned before, and I just mentioned it. Um, and I also have other e-courses that I run throughout the year. Coming up in September, September is Earrings Every Day Month. There is a free version or there's a premium version. Um, the premium version, you get a tutorial every single day. So sometimes it's videos like you're watching here. Um, sometimes it's PDFs and then sometimes it's both. Um, my e-workshops, like the one I just mentioned, they're a video and a PDF with one project. The Earrings e-course, like I said, is one tutorial every single day. It is right now at an early bird price for a limited time. So depending when you're watching this, you might be able to get the early bird price. Even the full price is a great value. Um, like I said, it starts September 1st. I did it last year and I'm doing it this year. And once you buy it, you get all the upgrades. That's for any of my classes. Um, if I update it, upgrade it, whatever, you get all of those updates as well. You never have to buy it again to get the updated version. So. I encourage you to come on over and take a look at my shop, see what e-workshops I have. I'll put a link for earrings e-course and earrings every day month so that if you're interested in that, you can get yourself signed up. And I am actually going to have another e-workshop coming out very shortly. Um, and this is going to be with spirals again. Um, I'm kind of in a spiral phase right now, but I'm sure I'll be getting out of it soon. But this is for a bracelet that I love. I made one for myself and I've been wearing it basically non-stop. And I've gotten tons of comments on it. So I decided to make it into a workshop for you. So you could make these earrings. You can make the beaded spiral pendant. I have an e-workshop for that. Or you could use just the plain spiral pendant, um, which was our last ECT TV episode um, and 
make the bracelet that I'm about to release and um, you have a full set of spirals. So I love to see what you're making. So if you make this project and you put it on Instagram, use the hashtag ECTTV or you can put it over on my Facebook page, facebook.com Emerging Creatively Tutorials. And if you come over to my website at KimberlyKohler.com, you will see step-by-step -step photo um, instructions on how to make these earrings if you learn better just by still photos. And if you sign up for my newsletter, when I have new ECT TV episodes that come out, I actually send out a PDF of that week's project. So you can download it and easily print it and take it to your work table if you like. So that is it for this episode and I will see you in a couple of weeks.